This then is the umpteenth SUV to join the Volkswagen range. It's a super mini sized SUV, has coupe styling, is front wheel drive only, and so its off road looks are really only skin deep. It's a little bit longer than a polo, a little bit wider than a polo, and a little bit taller than a polo. But if you said it was basically polo sized, you wouldn't be far wrong. It's also got a lot in common with the dinky, boxy, small SUV T-Cross. But because of the sweeping, swooping coupe styling, Volkswagen feels it can charge a little bit more for the Tygo. The Tygo is also not technically a totally new car, as it's really a light redesign of the Brazilian-developed Volkswagen Nevis that was launched in 2020. Under the skin, this car also uses the same mechanical bits as the Polo, which means there's a pair of three-cylinder turbocharged one-litre engines to choose from with either 95 or 110 horsepower, a five-speed manual, six-speed manual or seven-speed twin-clutch automatic gearbox. This car, though, is the top spec 1.5 R line and it gets a 150 horsepower four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. And you can't get that engine in the Polo range, and it represents the top of the range for the Tygo. Volkswagen want to entice you away from their very, very popular Ford Puma. Question is can it do it? Things start off well for the Tygo in the boot. It makes the most of its extra length over the Polo with a useful 440 litre load capacity. It's not quite up there with the Puma, but it's only a few litres short. Thanks to a roof line that doesn't plunge too dramatically, there's actually quite a bit of space back here for a low slung car. The headroom is almost as much as you get up front and leg room and knee room is also quite plentiful. If you regularly carry rear passengers, it's a better bet than the more cramped Puma. If you poke around the cabin, however, you will find plenty of hard, scratchy materials, which we can forgive in a Polo because that's about £3,000 cheaper than this car. We can even forgive it in the T-Cross because that's about £1,000 cheaper than this car. But the Tygo and being top of the range is about £29,000, so not really forgivable in this car. Aside from the disappointing sense of build quality, the Tygo's cabin is otherwise very impressive. The seats are comfortable and supportive, the driving position offers a broad range of adjustment, and the cabin layout is sensible. Ah yes, sensible layouts. Fortunately, the Tygo manages to avoid the touchpad only setup, which is so infuriating to use in the latest Golf and ID electric Volkswagens. That means you get physical buttons on the steering wheel, which we love, and a knob here to adjust the stereo volume. What is annoying though are these touch sensitive pads down here to adjust the climate control and heated seats. And talking of buttons and switches, the Tygo is very well equipped. True, this is the top spec R-Line model, so you get wireless phone charging, dual zone climate control, built-in sat-nav, and various other goodies. But even the most basic cars get the same eight inch touchscreen, adaptive cruise control, and automatic LED headlights. on the road, this version of the Tygo impresses immediately. And I say this version because the 1.5 litre turbocharged motor fitted to this one is such a sweet, smooth, free revving engine. And that combined with the seven speed automatic gearbox makes it genuinely quite quick. It goes from naught to 62 in 8.3 seconds. And no matter what gear or what speed you're doing, it feels lively. Cars with the three cylinder engines will likely have less luck. We're yet to try them in the Tygo, but we know they're a bit thrashy and noisy in the Polo, so don't expect them to be any better here. They will be more economical than this 1.5 though. Official fuel economy for this engine is 46.3 miles per gallon. I managed to get over 40 on a long journey. Realistically, it's in the mid 30s with a mix of driving. The three cylinders, however, you'll be able to get closer to 50 miles per gallon. 
whatever engine your Tygo has, it should be comfortable. Even on these large 17-inch alloy wheels, it rides smoothly, cushioning you well from lumps and bumps. The rear suspension can shudder through particularly challenging potholes, but overall, this is a car that rides pretty well. It's not that much fun on a twisty road, though. The light steering means you don't get that much feedback, so you don't really know what the car's nose is doing and that doesn't exactly inspire confidence in it. Here, a Ford Puma will put a much bigger smile on your face. Why not check out our Ford Puma comparison video after watching this one? In the real world though, away from unrealistic fantasies of empty country roads, the Tygo is a competent, comfortable and easygoing companion. A typical Volkswagen really. So what do you think of it? Is it a worthwhile addition to the seemingly endless ranks of small crossover SUVs? Maybe if you want a spacious, comfortable car with striking looks and the undoubted appeal of the Volkswagen badge. However, it is quite expensive, not as fun to drive as a Ford Puma, and the interior quality isn't quite up to scratch. To be perfectly honest, our money would still go on a Ford Puma, especially when you consider that the brilliant high-performance ST model is about the same price as this top-spec Tygo. Tell us your views on the Volkswagen Tygo in the comments below, and if you're considering buying one or indeed any car, head to cargurus.co.uk to find loads of great deals from top-rated dealers, including approved used examples.